Google released its latest budget smartphone, the Pixel 7a. It's got an internal redesign that mimics Apple's iPhone 14. So how will that affect repair? I purchased one to find out. This Pixel 7 is the white model in 128 gigabytes, which retails for 750 Australian dollars. We already know Google's positive stance on repair. They provide a fingerprint calibration tool and sell genuine parts through iFixit, today's video sponsor. With genuine parts for Google, Samsung and Motorola, iFixit is your one-stop shop for parts and tools, with up to 25% off select tools till the 19th of June. Visit the link in the description to learn more. The Pixel 7a is very much like the Pixel 7 on the outside. The key difference is in the materials. The back of the Pixel 7a is plastic compared to the glass and aluminium back on the 7. With that, it's time to get the Pixel set up before we take it apart. I noticed the touch wasn't all that responsive, causing me to misselect a language a few times. Possibly just a fault with my screen, but something that was still worth noting. But with the phone unboxed, it's time we opened it up. Over at the heat plate, I could heat the phone on the highest setting for a few minutes. This is usually enough to loosen any adhesive holding a phone together. But for the Google Pixel 7a, that wasn't the case. I went back and reheated the phone several times with absolutely no progress. Eventually, the phone had gotten so hot, the back panel ended up separating first. And we weren't even trying to heat that side of the phone. Working my pick around the perimeter of the back panel, it separates with ease. Unlike the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, the A model opens from the back, but that doesn't explain why the screen isn't coming off. After all, there'll be someone out there wanting to know how to break it free. So I took it back to the heat plate, leaving it to bake for 10 minutes on the highest setting. The phone was so hot, I was burning my hands through my gloves. So I had to place a cloth over the screen. And you wouldn't believe it, it still wouldn't come off. I've never seen anything like it. The bond between the frame and screen is totally unaffected by heat. The only way I defeated this phone was by jamming a metal tool into the earpiece opening and sliding it under the surrounding glass. It took at least 45 minutes to get this far. You might say the strong glue is used for water resistance, but that doesn't explain the back which was much easier to open. The ability to resist water ingress is only as good as its weakest point. So nothing I can think of can explain the reasoning behind this. Lifting up the display, we can see there was even glue covering the bottom flex cable. Before going any further, we should see if the display even works after all that. And I'm surprised that it still does. Now we can detach the OLED display from the phone. To do that, I'll need to use a Torx driver to remove the bracket covering the display's flex cable. Once the cable is detached, the screen can come free. One thing that caught my attention after separating the display is where's the adhesive? There's absolutely no sticky residue left behind around the edges, which simplifies sticking a new screen down but leaves me stumped. The only thing resembling adhesive is this black bead around the edge of the glass, but it's not sticky and it isn't coming off. With the phone designed in such a way that allows for the front and back to come off independently to one another, it allows for the ability to repair the phone without risking damaging the display, while also allowing the display to come off first if it needs replacement. Just like Apple's iPhone 14. We've only just started with this Pixel 7a. It's time to remove the wireless charging module and related plastic. This is pretty straightforward, however one of these screws is significantly smaller than the rest, also requiring a smaller T2 driver to remove. So it's important that you keep track of the screws as you remove them, as this smaller screw attaches directly to the motherboard, forcing a larger screw will cause unrepairable damage. The LED flash is also adhered to the plastic and must be detached prior to removal. 
With those removed, we get our first look at the motherboard and battery in the Google Pixel 7a. Here is where that tiny screw attaches. It helps keep the wireless charging pins connected. Speaking of tiny screws, there's another one holding this bracket in place. Under it is the battery's connection. There is a pull tab that's supposed to aid the battery's removal, but after attempting that four times in other Pixel phones, I know it doesn't work. So I'll just push the battery free from the other side. Of course, if the screen is still in place, I'd recommend using heat or alcohol to assist in this process. The battery is a 4,385 mAh cell, which is 30 mAh more than the Pixel 7. While basically the same capacity, it's technically larger. The last thing to come out in this Google Pixel will be its motherboard. To remove it, I'll need to take out the earpiece speaker, disconnect one flex cable, and loosen the cable for the front-facing camera. Once that's done, I can simply maneuver the board free. If the display had not been removed, you'd also now need to detach its cable from the underneath side of the motherboard. With the board free, you can see the charging port like other Pixel models is still soldered in place, something no phone at this point should have. However, I guess the option of wireless charging is there. On the back, you'll also find the connections for all three cameras. All that remains inside the frame is the speaker, vibration motor, and flex cable for the buttons, microphone, and LED flash. With that, we've completely disassembled the Google Pixel 7a. Keeping track of all the screws and pieces is of course iFixit's new fix mat. There isn't too much to keep track of except the all important screw sizes. And besides the new opening procedure, the rest of the internals are very typical of a Google phone. But we can't look at it disassembled forever, so it's time we get this phone back in one piece. I'll plug the screen in before attaching the battery. Although Google's phones are designed to allow for the screen to be plugged in while the battery is attached, it still just feels incorrect. As I don't have any proper adhesive, for now I'll just be reassembling the device without any as I'll come back and apply the proper stuff once it's released. Next to go in is the battery along with its accompanying bracket. Proceeding, it's time for the wireless charging module to go back in place along with its 15 screws. That sounds like a lot of screws for one component, but this plastic section actually secures a lot of the components below it. Of course, I can't forget to put the tiny little screw back in its right spot. With the screws in, I can re-adhere the LED flash and install the SIM card tray. After cleaning out the insides with a microfiber cloth and some air, I can reattach the back panel. With that, we've completed the teardown of the Google Pixel 7a, and with everything back together, we can see the phone... just... died? It's definitely on, and I can hear it, but the screen is dead. I tried turning the phone off, and when I did, the screen came back. But every time it boots up, the screen goes blank. I thought maybe I just didn't connect the screen properly, so a simple unplug and replug in of the connection and we can try again. Pressing the power button, we see the Google logo and the animation, but it flashes quickly when it reaches the lock screen before going black. I was able to enter recovery mode and factory reset the phone, but as soon as I clicked reboot, the display went black until it arrived at the setup page. The brightness is dim and the screen shuts off when I open certain windows, such as the language selector, or Wi-Fi options, but it comes back when I close out of them. I have no reason to believe this is anti-repair, just the screen has failed. So it seems these pixels have gone out. So this is it. The only phone out of 25 brand new phones I've disassembled for these teardown and repair assessment videos to not work properly after reassembly. We started with a new Pixel 7a that seemed not to have very good touch input. We removed the screen after lots of difficulty, but it was still working. I disconnected it, took a few shots, and put it back on the phone. There's nothing I did that would have damaged the screen, it simply failed in a very strange way. 
The only reason this phone won't get a complete fail result from this repair assessment is because the only reason you'd ever remove the display is because it needs replacement. Any other repair can be performed by removing the back panel instead. At the end of the day, I do these tests so you don't have to, so you know how repairable the device is before you buy. This phone likely has a hard OLED screen, the more fragile, cheaper OLED technology. I wonder if my issues will be a once-off. I can only hope. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.